Okay, imagine this. You're chilling at your local Barnes & Noble with your friends, and one of them suddenly blurts out a crazy idea of developing a visual novel game. You look at him and think, he's not serious, right? Usually when someone suggests these ideas, most of the time it remains an idea only, and they simply fizzle into the unknown void of projects we fantasize about but no one wants to put any effort in. But this time was different. We decided no matter what happened, we would finish this project. But did we have the skills to do this? My friend is a fantastic writer and has a talent for designing mind games while I know how to code. With those skills, we started to develop a visual novel game where my friend slash co-partner was tasked with creating the concept and writing the script while I served as a team's programmer. Even though I had studied computer science in undergrad and went on to become a software engineer for my full-time job, these things are actually very far from game development. At my job, I mainly maintained web apps and C++ backends, and this would be my first time developing a game. However, I always loved playing games and I decided to take a stab at game development. Throughout the span of the project, I often asked myself this question of can someone like me who writes C++ backend code for a living develop a visual novel game? Especially since I've not developed one, nor have I played too many. Call it imposter syndrome or whatever you like, but I felt like my skills as a software engineer wouldn't be enough. In this video, I will go through my experiences of developing my first game from the perspective of a software engineer. While my co-partner would handle most of the story and the concept, I would be responsible for the more technical aspects of the game. The first part of that task is figuring out what tools to use. This includes engines, tech stacks, platforms, etc. Even though I wasn't familiar with game dev engines, being an engineer was actually helpful. One of the core skills as a software engineer besides the obvious one like writing code is having strong research skills. As an engineer, new tech is constantly coming out, and if you want to stay relevant, you must learn continuously. This turned out to be no different than figuring out what tools to use when developing this game. I decided to use this visual novel engine called Rempy. While we researched some other options, I chose this engine mainly due to its wealth of support and being very beginner friendly for those who may not have too much coding experience, which is a huge plus for my co-partner. Despite its simplicity, the engine also offers flexibility in more complicated things like embedding an action game within a visual novel. Check my Space Invaders game in Renpy video for more details. But by doing some simple prototyping and research, I came to conclude that this was the best engine for our use case. I developed this game by emulating some of the processes of my previous software projects. One of these processes is using source control. Source control is a tool that allows you to track and manage different versions of code. A good example of how it's useful is when you have a critical problem with a new feature, you can always roll back to a previous stable version. The same logic can be applied to a game. Therefore, if we had any critical issues with a game build, we can always roll it back. We use Git as our source control and GitHub to host the files. We had our own standards up for how a change we made into the code base, and the process is very similar to other software projects. Generally, our guideline is to never merge to main and always review each other's work. Having good source control practices and by applying it to the game development process helped with the development of the game. This ensures for every incremental change, we not only can provide immediate feedback, but also catch any bugs that could be introduced. One practice I unfortunately did not incorporate was writing unit tests. Unit tests are a fundamental part of the software engineering cycle. Every piece of logic is tested to ensure high level of code quality. As we developed, the only testable logic was embedded in the game, and there was no suitable test framework for RenPy. However, I came across this post several months later where the creator of the game engine wrote a small blurb about unit tests in RenPy games. The creator recommended isolating the code and testing it separately in Python modules. While I did not write any unit tests for this game, if I were to develop another game, future games would be unit tested with those ideas in mind. Now that was a quick summary of how I utilized my software engineering skills to go about developing this game. But I found it wasn't enough, and the game wasn't fully complete with just those skills. If you ever worked in a traditional big company, chances are you heard of the phrase, a cog in a machine. Translation, your actions have very little impact and you're simply a replaceable part. While this is true for my job, however, this is not the case when developing this game. I want to highlight that despite my credits as a programmer, that is a slight lie. I found during development, I'm no longer siloed as a programmer, but basically every role necessary to finish the game. Yes, most of my responsibility is still tech related, but I had also delegate some time to non-coding tasks. I dusted off my English skills, which were last used for a college writing course some years ago, to help my co-partner edit and make suggestions to the story script, 
I had to learn how to hire artists and pretend like I know how to negotiate on commissions to get artwork, mainly because my co-partner and I did not have any art skills whatsoever. I even became an educator when I taught my co-partner on how to use Git and its semantics. I could go on, but I think you get the idea. I think this is the reality when you become an owner of your own project. You have multiple responsibilities and expectations because simply, there's no one else to do it. Thankfully, I had my friend handle most of the creative aspects. However, I still had to participate in the creative process and give my input. At certain times, I felt a little bit of anxiety because I had no experience in some of these other areas. The only responsibility I had during my software engineering job is to mainly write code. So it makes sense that I'm not accustomed to all these different roles because I didn't have to do them. But having multiple roles and responsibility is not necessarily a bad thing, and I treat it as a learning experience. In fact, I enjoyed some of the more non-technical aspects as it was a good step back from the coding. Plus, it's super awesome to see something built from basically zero and having a little bit of part in everything. My friend finally delivered a rough draft of the story script and I worked with him to give feedback. Once that was finalized, since he wrote it on a Word document, I fed that script into my Word doc to Rampy program to build out the dialogue part of the game. For those who don't know, I wrote a small script that translated the Word doc to a Rampy text format. For more details, check out my Dr. Rampy video. We collaborated to put the final pieces of the game after receiving the art assets from a commissioned artist. After all that, we finally released our first game. It's called Lilith Wants to Buy Your Soul, and it is a short visual novel that follows the demon Lilith trying to evaluate slash buy your soul under the parody of a BuzzFeed quiz. So, did my skills in software engineering aid in the development of this visual novel game? For one, these skills have made the technical aspects of the game possible. Researching the right tools, having a systematic review process all ensure the game is running smoothly as intended and hopefully bug free. I fulfilled my duty as the lead tech guy and I call this a win. However, when it came to game development, I've learned that being the tech guy isn't enough. I've talked about fulfilling different roles other than being just a programmer. I've learned to realize that a game dev is not someone who simply just writes code, but they are a manager, designer, or whatever role necessary to finish the game. Having the skills of a software engineer only prepared me for the technical aspects of game development. So to answer my own question, my software engineering skills did help partially. I'm glad I developed this game of a friend who took on the brunt of the creative process and direction. This whole experience made me realize that I can't do this alone, and while having a tech background helps, it only remains part of the puzzle. Overall, I had fun. One of the major joys is working on a project with someone else who shares the same passion for these type of projects. For the future, I want to keep making more. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed my talk on developing my first game. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you all later.